When you say the word health, you are referring to the well-being of yourself or others. So naturally, health becomes a personal matter, especially when it revolves around your own health. Everyone wants to be in better health, which is, again, a very natural impulse. The first and easiest thing you can do to better your health is to eat properly and work out routinely. Eating properly can become dieting and monitoring what comes into your kitchen. Working out, on the other hand, can be somewhat trickier. Working out doesn't have to mean you aim to become a bodybuilder or weightlifter, though those are possible achievements to gain from working out. It could simply mean you want to maintain a certain weight or keep your body moving properly and functionally. In such cases, to maintain proper health, you don't need dumbbells and treadmills, only a functional fitness routine. In this video, we'll talk about what is functional fitness. Functional fitness defined. You may not have heard the term functional fitness before watching this, but the truth is that functional fitness is all around you. Functional fitness refers to a type of fitness where you keep your body moving in simulated routines that resemble everyday tasks. Now, most people imagine working out as this fantastical imagery where you have a solid core and large protruding biceps that bulge every time you lift weights. This image is one that's better to burn. Not everyone can live this fantasy, and in most cases, it's unrealistic and impractical. You can't be your average person when you look like Dwayne Johnson, and honestly, keeping such a physique in shape is harder to do than maintaining a normal one. It'll become an extra weight on your shoulders that you'll quickly get tired of carrying. An easier and more reasonable way to maintain a fit figure is by sticking to simpler goals. What most people want is to be able to perform with the most practicality on a daily basis. To ensure this, drop the weights and stick to more natural movements. This is where you'll resort to functional fitness. With functional fitness, you'll be doing squats, lunges, stretches, and pumps that are closer to home. All of these movements will resemble or become more exaggerated versions of actions you do every day. Take lunges as an example. Lunges are the movement of stretching out and bending your leg. Though you'll never be found walking in this cycle, it's imitating the movements you make in more extreme cases. Going up the stairs and running use the same actions as walking does, but with more strength and power. By doing lunges, your muscles and joints become accustomed to the strong pull and strain and therefore perform more effectively as you run. As you grow older, you may have found that your body can't do the same things it used to. It's all right, since this happens to everybody. Unfortunately, the more lethargic you become, the faster this will happen to you, so it's better to get up and get moving in any way that you can. Functional fitness can be performed anywhere, at any level of difficulties. For instance, you can even use your own body weight to perform the exercises without using any gym equipment. As long as you're moving in a way that can benefit your body, you're doing some kind of functional fitness. It's better than lifting the heaviest weights and then snapping when you're trying to load groceries into your car. Complementing functional fitness with your lifestyle. As mentioned earlier, hoping for the perfect 10 out of 10 body is unrealistic and quite impractical. The basic aim should always be maintaining a healthy body you, as a person, are satisfied with. Being fit is only a further benefit to yourself. That said, your exercises shouldn't interrupt your schedule, but rather flow inside of it. Once it becomes a problem to find time for your workout, a red flag should signal in your mind. Here are some tips to keep in mind when crafting a workout routine that works for you. Firstly, it shouldn't take long at all. A 15 to 25 minute routine is enough to make a difference, as long as you're implementing this workout every day. You don't need anything that hard, just simple repetitive movements to properly pump your muscles. These few spare minutes can be early in the morning or after your busy day. Typically, it's better to work out before you start your day's work. Otherwise, doing anything at the end of the day will tire you out more than you'd usually be. You can also develop intense strain and pain if you remain idle for too long after a workout. Another idea is to spread out your workouts through the week. 
On days you're working, work out for only 15 minutes, and on weekends or holidays, work out for 20 to 25 minutes. This way you won't tire yourself out when you have other things to do. Any system that suits your schedule is fine, so long as you're getting the essential minimum of 15 minutes. When you start out, keep all of your moves minimalistic. Nothing too extravagant that'll pull your muscles before you've even used them. No weights in the beginning. They will strain your muscles far too quickly. Once you're used to the burn from simpler workouts, you can apply small two or three pound weights. Never start out big. It's unhealthy, unrealistic, and impractical. When you're working out, keep some water nearby and wear active wear. Always keep yourself hydrated when working out, even if you don't feel tired while working out. There's always an after effect. Have lots of free space around you with a clean carpeted floor or purchase yourself a yoga mat for moves where you bend or lie down. The more space you have, the fewer chances there are of an injury or breaking something near you. Is functional fitness right for you? Not everyone is capable of working out. Though society has now made it something very normal, you may not fit in with this group of people that can work themselves to the bone. If you're baffled, bear through, for there is an explanation. Yes, it's true that functional fitness basically tries to cover all generic movements. Reinforce your stamina, strength, and range of motion. Yet still, what about those people who can perform daily tasks and nothing more? Illnesses, weakness, age, and injury can prevent you from doing more than what you're currently capable of. Though you may feel you're ready for more, your body may not be. Remember, before anything else, there's no need to push limits that shouldn't be pushed. In typical cases, functional fitness can cover most people's necessities. Whether you're hunting for the better body or a more productive day, functional fitness reaps the benefits to aid you down that road. But for those with physical restraints and disabilities, there's no harm in realizing what you're not capable of doing. If you're injured, then it's momentary, unless the after effect is lifelong. A scrape or bruise will put you down for a few days. Broken bones will keep you grounded for a much longer period and, in some severe cases, the rest of your life. If bodily functions are really something you wish to improve, though, then there's no reason for you to carelessly carry yourself around, injuring your limbs. Other momentary obstacles can be surgery, pregnancy, traveling, or moving, and other impactful events in life. There's no way you can keep up working out each and every day, especially if you have other things on your agenda to attend to. Fret not if you miss a day. Simply get back into the routine as soon as you can. The longer you wait, the harder it'll be to return to your former glory. As you grow older, you'll become more limited to what you can do. Bone health and newly developed issues have to be taken into account before you attempt any kind of workout. The older you become, the less likely it'll be that you can fit functional fitness into your habitual routine. That's why it's always better to start such things in your best health when you have no obstacles. Some people are born with permanent issues that prevent them from working in certain positions. There are many situations you may find yourself in. Being born with weaker bone strength could mean you're incapable of working yourself past a certain degree. So the basic idea here is that demotivation is the countering effect of motivation. It's a block that prevents you from becoming motivated, and its cure is, if anything, motivation. Breathing or digestive issues can also hold you down from working out, since these areas will be directly affected.